Hi booktube, it's Andrea and today I'm going to do my December book haul. Now I know in my uh, update for 2018 uh, channel I said I wasn't going to be buying as many books because I'm trying to uh, reduce my TBR pile. But I did buy a few in uh, uh, December, some second hand ones, some fiction and I got given a couple for Christmas, well three. So I'm just going to share those with you now and we'll have a look and see what we've uh, what we've got. So the first book I've got this month is Rivers of London by Ben Aranovich. I already have read this, I borrowed it from the library a while back but I decided I wanted to reread it and keep it. So basically uh, this is London as you've never seen it. Uh, a, a city of wonders and terrors, a city of ancient secrets which is haunted by its past. A city where you are never far from magic, a city Peter Grant will help you discover. And then it says, my name is Peter Grant and I used to be a probational constable in that mighty army for justice known to all right-thinking people as the Metropolitan Police Service and to everyone else as the filth. My story really started when I tried to take a witness statement from a man who was already dead. So it goes on to tell you a bit more about it. Um, so basically, yeah, a ghost gives him a witness statement about a man who's just been murdered. Um, he witnessed it. Peter Grant discovers that he has the touch, he can see things that aren't there um, and he trains to become a magician or a wizard um, in a special branch of the police which is very small and contains one other person. It's a great story, it's actually really funny so yeah I did enjoy that the first time round so, and I've read it all again so I did really enjoy it. So the next set of books, uh, fiction again, and these are the first three books for the Stephen Kingathon 2018. So we've got Misery, which obviously, as you can tell, I am currently reading. And this tells the story of writer Paul Sheldon, who, uh, on completing his newest novel, drives um, through a snowstorm under the slight influence of, of, drug, of drink. He's finished a new novel, he's killed off the character of his other series, and he's celebrated, he's driving through a snowstorm and he crashes his car. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on which way you look at it, he is pulled from the wreckage by his number one fan, Annie Wilkes. Unfortunately, Annie Wilkes is not there. In fact, she's one slight lo short of a loaf. She is misery. Misery being the, ca the character in his books, number one fan. She loves the stories. And she's not happy when she finds out that he has killed off Misery Chastain and wants him to bring her back. So she looks after him to her point, but when he doesn't do what she wants to, she gets very, very violent. Obviously this was made into the successful movie Misery with um, Kathy Bates, which I've never seen because I always read the book first, so maybe I'll catch up with it afterwards. But yeah, so I'm enjoying that one, reading that at the moment. Uh, the next book is Blaze, which is again Stephen King, but it was when he was writing as Richard Bachman. Um, he's got a plan, but he hasn't got a clue. Clayton Blaisdell's escapers a strictly small time until he meets George Rackley. With Blaze's brawn and George's brains, they pull off a hundred successful cons. Then George plans one big score, every small time at Dreams of kidnapping the infant heir to a family fortune. The trouble is that by the time the deal goes down, the brains of the operation has died. Or has he? Now Blaze is running into the white hell of the main woods with a baby as a hostage. The crime of the century has just turned into a race against time. So, yeah, that sounds quite interesting. Looking forward to that. And if you've noticed, these King books aren't the big ones. They're quite slim, so I should get a bit more reading done as well while I'm reading the, you know. Whereas some of the huge, massive ones take so long to read, you can't read many books in a month. But with these, I should be able to uh, keep on track on my Goodreads. And then March's book is Dolores Claiborne, again by Stephen King. The other thin one. These are all only just over 300 pages, which is really short for King. And this one says, Dolores Claiborne has a story to tell, but not quite what the police had expected. Dolores Claiborne has a confession to make. She will take her time, won't be hurried, will do it her way. Sparing neither details nor feelings, hers or anyone else's. This is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Truth that takes you to the edge of darkness. Dolores Claiborne has a story to tell, and you'd better pay attention or else. I have no idea what it's about, other than that, because I've never read it. So I'm looking forward to that because I am enjoying 
catching up on these all these old Stephen King stories that I've never read. I've read loads of Stephen King, but not these ones. The rest of the books are now non-fiction. I picked up some second-hand film books. Um, the first one I got is uh, Doris Day by Eric Braun. It's a lovely picture of Doris on the cover. So Doris Day is almost always portrayed as the sunny, squeaky clean girl next door. But I don't even like apple pie, she insists. Yet this wholesome image kept her at the top for 24 years and 39 films. An immediate success in her first film, she was America's favourite by the 50s. Nominated for an Ox Oscar for Pillar Talk in 1959 and starred opposite Cary Grant, Rock Hudson and James Garner in a series of bedroom farces during the 50s and 60s. And was revived for a new generation of TV viewers in 1989. Now this authoritative biography reveals Doris Day's childhood and early fame as a singer from the 1940s, the near-fatal car crash that put paid to her budding career as a dancer, her four marriages and passionate campaigns for animal welfare. It is life very different from her constant virgin image and essential reading for her many fans. So this is quite an old uh, biography and was originally published in 1991. So Doris Day is still with us bless her so her story's not over yet so which is great but yeah I like Doris Day I love some of the movies I love her singing I've got loads of CDs um so I do like to read about the stars that I like have you noticed that most of the stars I read about are actually female I just think they're fascinating and not that I don't like reading about male stars because I do but I just find maybe it's because I'm a woman myself I just find female stars so fascinating so I'm looking forward to that I don't think that's going to take me very long it's very very dingy next I managed to pick up two books from um Troutmark in Newport which is one of my favorite secondhand bookshops um sometimes they've got some really great film stuff in there and sometimes they haven't it depends it's secondhand it comes and goes um but I picked up the films of Mary Pickford by Raymond Lee and this is lots and lots of photographs of Mary Pickford I haven't really looked through it yet a bit of a, a, a story of her life and of course a list of all the films she made sadly many of which are now lost but uh it's, it's gonna be a nice little addition to my my uh, entertainment shelf and uh, yeah my film history books because I, I like these books I like having a list of the films of of people and that, that's what I'm going to do with the next one so that's Mary Pickford but I also picked out and I've been looking to get this one for a while um, a hardback copy of the films of Clark Gable now this is like the Marilyn Judy Garland one the Jean Harlow one and the Mae West one in the sense that it a it lists all the films it also gives you a synopsis of the film the cast the crew and even some of the reviews so fascinating and filled with lovely photographs of the wonderful Gable. So obviously he starred with two of my favourite stars. Um, obviously he starred with Marilyn in the last film he ever made, which was The Misfits. And if I can find a picture, he also starred, I think it was six times, with the lovely Gina Harlow, as you can see there. Um, so yes, love it. Um, whoever owned these books before did cut out pictures of Gable and Mary Pickford from other magazines or books, French ones by the look of it, uh, and popped them in, which is quite nice. On to the three books that I got for Christmas. Again, they're all non-fiction. My brother gave me a book called London Uncovered by Mark Daly. I think I saw this one on on booktube and I thought I've got to add that to my list it might not have been I might have just seen it on Amazon but oh I want that and basically this is like uh, 60 unusual places in London for you to explore and visit with some great photographs as well so if I can find an index we've got there is an index uh, historical homes uh, food and drinks so obviously restaurants Palaces of Entertainment, so that should be interesting. Places of Worship. Remarkable Shops. Science and Education. The Inns of Court and Unusual Museums. And it's filled with absolutely stunning photographs. So it's sort of a photo book, but it's also a guide to some interesting places in London. So I'm looking forward to that. It's quite a heavy book as well. 
my mum and dad gave me let's get the dust jacket on right uh warner brothers hollywood's ultimate backlot back lot i can't say it uh steve bingham with mark wanamaker bison archives and a forward by doris day because she made a lot of her films there so it basically if I just read what it says, uh, movie studios are the wondrous, almost magical locales where not just films but legends are created. Unfortunately, these celebrity playgrounds are and always have been largely hidden from public view. Although some movie studios offer tours, few guests from outside the Hollywood community have ever been witnessed to the artistry, politics and scandals that rout routinely go on behind the soundstage walls and away from the carefully orchestrated scenes visible to them from their tram carts. In this book, studio staff historian and Hollywood insider Steve Bingham throws open Hollywood's iron gates and takes you inside the greatest and yet most mysterious movie studio of them all, Warner Brothers. Long home to the world's biggest stars and most memorable films and television shows, the Warner Brothers studio lot functions as a small city and is even more fascinating, glamorous and outrageous than any of the stars or movies that have been it has been routinely minting for more than 90 years, accompanied by stunning behind the scenes photos and maps, including a revealing backstory. This book is your ticket to a previously veiled Hollywood paradise. So we do have uh, lots of photographs of the studio, the stars. Here we are. There's the water tower. Um, and this is just one of uh, many uh, books that are on Hollywood studios that I want to get for my uh, entertainment collection. If you've been watching this channel, you know, I think you would have seen it before. I have the MGM backlot one, which shows the old backlot of MGM before it was uh, torn down in the 70s. It's, I can't see it, it's on here. Uh, yeah, there it is. MGM Hollywood's Greatest Backlot. Um, there are books on the history of 20th Century Fox and Paramount, RKO, United Artists and so on. And I would like to collect some more of them because it's fascinating. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been to America. I've done the Universal Studios tour in Hollywood. That was brilliant. Really enjoyed it. I would love to see some of the others. I know that the uh, Marilyn community do occasionally uh, get a tour of the Fox lot. Uh, whether or not that'll happen anymore now it's been taken over by Disney. I don't know, but there we go. And the final book um, I got this month was from my partner's mother, Sally, uh, for, for Christmas, a book I wanted, and it's Judy and I, My Life with Judy Garland by Sid Luft, forwarded by Randy L. Schmidt. So this is the memoirs of Sid Luft, who was Judy Garland's third husband and father of her two children, Lorna and Joey. And they had a, quite a stormy relationship for over 10 years. They met in, I think, 1950, and they were together into the mid early to mid 60s um they made one film together which was a star is born which is fantastic so this is sid's uh, memoir so i'm looking forward to this with some trepidation because obviously they did have a very tumultuous relationship especially in the later years um but it'll be nice to read something from sid's point of view because obviously as a judy garland fan and student because i love judy Obviously, we see interviews and read things that she's written about their relationship and she's not always the nicest person when she's talking about him. But it would so it's nice to read it from the other person's point of view. And of course, the truth will fall somewhere in the middle because that's what, you know, there's three sides to every story. Here's hers and the truth. So those are all the books I got in December and for Christmas. As you see, not a huge pile. It's not like 30 or 40 books like we've had in the past. Aren't we naughty? But yeah, so mostly non-fiction, um, a, a few bits of fiction, especially our Stephen King's thrown in for good measure. So I don't know if there'll be a book haul at the end of January. There may well be. I may do them quarterly. It really depends on how many I get, because obviously at the end of January, I will be buying the next three Stephen King books for the Stephen Kingathon. But we, we don't just want a Stephen King book haul. We want more books, so. There will be, at some point, how many was up there? One, two, three, four. A Marilyn Monroe book haul. I've got about six now, so hopefully within the next couple of months we'll have ten and then I will haul them. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. If you've read any of these books, uh, leave me a comment below. I'd be particularly interested if you've read Judy and I. It's a fairly new book. It did only came out last year. 
Um, but if you've read any of the Stephen King's, what do you think? Um, obviously, I've read Rivers of London, but I would like to know what you think about that as well. And yeah, just leave me a comment down below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And I will see you again fairly shortly. Bye.